Three practice mistakes that kill your progress. We haven't met. Hi, I'm Megan. I'm a violinist and teacher currently based in New Jersey. I've been playing the violin for over 20 years. I have both my bachelor's and master's degrees in violin performance, and I'm a Suzuki trained teacher. So it's safe to say I've done a lot of practicing um, in my career. If you haven't already, please make sure you're subscribed to my channel and check out my membership, Learn Violin Online, which is always linked in the description. When you join Learn Violin Online, you not only become a part of an exclusive community, but you get access to all of my digital courses, which is quite literally thousands of video tutorials and direct access to me. You can try it completely free for five days to see if it's the right fit for you. I know how frustrating it is to feel like you're not improving, especially when you are putting in the work and practicing. It's easy to feel like giving up when you feel like the fruits of your labor are not coming into fruition. So here are the three biggest practice mistakes that will kill your progress. I have personally made these mistakes and I try my best to prevent my students from making these mistakes. So mistake number one is repeating things incorrectly. You've probably heard that you need to repeat a lot in practice, which is true. However, most students use repetition incorrectly. You only want to repeat something when it sounds exactly like you want it to. So say you're working on a passage and it's not sounding quite how you'd like. You play it five more times, so you played it a total of six times before you finally get it perfect. So at this point, you played it six times, five times incorrectly, and once correctly. Now this is when a lot of students move on. They might play it again one or two times and honestly overlook the little things that went wrong. It might not be totally perfect, but that's exactly what you don't want to do. In order to dramatically increase the likelihood of you playing the passage correctly the next time you stumble upon it, you need to practice it correctly at least four more times. So you have five times correctly, five times incorrectly, but ideally 10 more times. So you have a much greater chance of playing it correctly than you do incorrectly. And if you mess up or play something you don't quite like, that repetition doesn't count. Is it tedious? Yes. Is it worth it? Also yes. I honestly did not understand this concept or like fully apply it into my practice until I was getting my master's. So I cringe at literally the hours I spend wasted. You only want to repeat things when they sound exactly how you want them to. And ideally you would like to play the passage um, exactly how you want it to sound many, many more times than you play it incorrectly. The second practice mistake that kills your progress is using the wrong practice techniques. So say you wanted to work on intonation in a certain passage. You would need to use practice techniques that specifically target intonation. So that would be things like practicing with the tuner, practicing with the drum, listening to the ring of your instrument, and so on. You would not want to practice it with the metronome. You would not want to practice it in rhythms because those are targeting different things. Now, the caveat with this is that you have to, first of all, understand the problem. If you misdiagnose the problem, you're automatically going to use the wrong practice techniques. But two, you also have to understand the proper practice techniques that will help you solve the problem that you're facing. I actually created a free practice guide where I go over several different ways to um, target certain things such as intonation, rhythm, phrasing, etc. And if you comment guide down below, I'll send it to you. And the third practice mistake that really kills your progress is infrequent and unfocused sessions. So let's talk about infrequent first. The unfortunate thing is that when we are not using our muscle memory, aka when we are not practicing consistently, we will lose it. I remember when I was going off to college, my teacher at the time, Frank Hong, told me, now don't just try to cram your practice into one day. You have to spread it out throughout the week. And guess what? I ended up trying to cram it in one day, but that's besides the point. It's better to practice for less time more frequently than more time less frequently. So it's better to practice 30 minutes every day rather than an hour every two or three days. Again, because if you are not using your muscle memory, even just for a day, 
it will start to decline. An unfocused session simply means that your mind isn't there. You aren't setting goals. You aren't actively figuring out what particular issue you're trying to solve. You're not recording yourself. You're not treating it as a study or a practice. You're kind of just going through the motions and playing your instrument. I mean, I think any amount of time playing the violin is, is great, but if you truly want to improve, your mind has to be present. Your mind has to always be going through before your fingers because sure, our, our hands and play the instrument, but getting their information from the brain. So the three practice makes that kill your progress are repeating things incorrectly, using the wrong practice techniques and infrequent and unfocused sessions. If you are not seeing progress in your practice, I recommend that you evaluate yourself on these three aspects and make sure none of them apply to you. Make sure you're subscribed before you go. Check out Learn Violin online in the description and thank you for watching.